I got in my EVGA RTX 2080 Super for the Win3 Ultra Graphics card. Someone's got to change this marketing scheme because these names are getting ridiculous. Okay, as I said, these names are just getting psychotic. First off, Super. I mean, my God, I'm waiting for someone to answer the phone going, Super, thanks for calling. I mean, it's just, it's ridiculous. I hate this name. Anyway, let's open this up before we get it swapped out. Um, this standard EVGA packaging at the moment. Not much to it. One thing I will say is, boy, this thing is freaking heavy. Which I don't think is any different from the 2080 or the 2070 or the 2080 Ti. Uh, I've got a couple of the four to win, four to win three cards. I love the 2080 Ti's, but for the price, this is an interesting card to have. So we get it out of the ever annoying and loud static bag. And this is what we get. I mean, it looks exactly like the uh, 2080, except for now this is super. And um, yeah, not particularly exciting uh, aesthetically compared to what you currently got, but it is um, a little less expensive than when the 2080 first came out. Um, so what we're gonna do, is I'm not gonna say too much more about the unboxing experience because it's, you know, it is what it is. We're gonna get this thing installed here. Um, I guess everybody probably would like to know what's in this little thing though. So first, the EVGA badge. Ooh. And then, HDMI to DVI cable for your VR. Outside of that, that's what you get in the box. Nothing else exciting. So let's go ahead and get it swapped out and come back, play some games, run some benchmarks, and talk about some uh, minor thoughts about the uh, new card for the 2080 series. Okay, got the card installed. Uh, it looks no different than the uh, 2080 for the Win3 Ultra. Oh, it says on it is super. However, there is going to be a performance difference, and we're going to go over that here in just a second. We're going to run through a couple benchmarks, run a, a time spy real quick, and then um, play a couple games, finish the benchmarks, and then we'll wrap it up here. First off, for connectivity, this does have uh, two 1.4 display ports, two 2.0B HDMI ports, and a USB Type-C uh, port right on the back. This also does have a dual BIOS mode. Right now it's defaulted, uh, switched into normal. Um, I'll probably to keep this thing in overclock uh, in the OC mode. Uh, um, before I get going, I just, I have to do the same thing everybody else has, does, has done. Why on God's earth did we name this thing the Super? I mean, what marketing idiot sat there and goes, oh my gosh, I've got the best idea ever. We're going to call this card, wait for it, Super. 
Isn't that a great idea? Because that'll just tell everybody that it's better than the previous one. Holy crap. I mean, this has to be the dumbest, dumbest marketing scheme I've ever come across. I mean, it is just brutal. I don't know if someone was sitting at EVGA and just, or not EVGA, I'm sorry, at NVIDIA and was throwing darts at a board and it landed, a dart landed on the word super and go, that's what we should name our cards. Let's call them super for the next out roll. I mean, it's just, oh my God, it's the worst marketing ever. However, I'm going to back off of that. Everybody else has hit it, but I had to say something because it's just, oh, it's so idiotic. It's, it's horrendous thing. Right off the bat, I noticed it's extremely quiet. Uh, in fact, you'll notice that the fans aren't even spinning at the moment. And the reason why, because it's not being used. And in idle, while it's not being used right now, temperature is 29 degrees Celsius. I mean, it's, I guess it's not being used. <laughs> or the, uh, the, it's not drawing much to it. So that makes sense why it would be as cool as it is. The idea is, as it ramps up for heat, and thermals that it's going to then dissipate that by turning on the fans and going from there. Now, I'll, I could set a manual fan curve, go through this and have it running all the time, leave it as silent, doesn't matter, but I will say it is very quiet. This card also seems to run pretty cool, especially when I get the fan curve going here, and you'll, you'll notice that in game once we start uh, uh, running some tests on this thing. Um, so let's actually dive in. Let's get a couple of those taken care of here. We'll discuss pricing and some of the features of the card when we get done and go from there. First thing we're gonna do is run a Time Spy Extreme Test. Uh, and we're gonna do this with stock settings. Uh, I'm not touching anything here, we're not touching fan curve, boost behavior, power target, nothing. We're just gonna leave it completely stock. So here we go, let's go ahead and run this. And uh, come back here in a second and see how this is working. First thing I'm going to notice or point out here is our clock boosted right off the bat up to 1995. That's fluctuating a little bit there. GPU temp is at 56, 55 degrees, and right now the fans are not even spinning yet. See the memory usage, memory clocks at the, the 7751 frames. You can see that on time spike stream. Again, this is a little bit heavier than just the 1080p um, workload. But as temperature is coming up here a little bit, the fans have started kicking on. They're really quiet. Uh, you can see my boost clock came up a little bit there for a second when the fans kicked on. Now the fans are off again. You can see how the temperature's all over the place. Uh, or I shouldn't say all over the place, but is you know, in the 50s anyway. So we're gonna finish this, see what the score is that we get, and then we'll come back to this in a second. Okay, coming to the end of the, re the test here. And <clears throat> complete stock settings is the first thing I wanna point out. Nothing set with regards to power limits, uh, memory clock, uh, core clock, nothing, fan curve, everything is purely stock. So our graphics score on time by extreme was 5296. Okay, so that's a good score uh, for what it is. Uh, I wanna point out, I did use the i9-9900K it's also at stock settings as I don't believe that it would be fair to overclock the heck out of my CPU to try to show some false performance on how someone might use this out of the box. What I want to do next is we are going to shut this down. I'm going to switch it into the OC mode for the BIOS uh, on the card and see if there's any type of a difference and then we're going to... Um, do some benchmarks, play a couple games, and then be done here. Okay. We are going to go over here to the card. Flip the little BIOS switch. Now we're into OC mode. We're going to start everything back up. Then we're going to do it all again. Okay, first thing off the bat, clock boosted up to 1995, dropped down to 1980. Temperatures uh, almost immediately hit the low 60s. Um, we'll see if this affects our score at all in the long run. Uh, the only thing difference I'm noticing is it is staying at that higher 1980-1995. Now a little longer than the last one. The last one seemed to be going to 1980 down to like 1950. 
um, right off the bat. I also noticed that the temperature is a little hotter this time around than it was last. And again, I expect that's coming from the uh, OC uh, profile on the BIOS. But we're going to ahead and let this finish up, come back and review this. Okay, here we are. And score is a little higher. My graphics score is 5437. So that's higher than the, I believe, 5296 of the last one. So, let's go ahead and boot up a game like, um, I guess, Overwatch or something. Play that real quick and uh, see what that's like. Okay, we're going to play a little Overwatch here. Pick this because at 1080, this is probably where most people are going to be playing this game. Uh, if they're playing competitively, um, they want a high refresh rate monitor. Uh, they want the fastest response time possible. And you're not always going to get that in 4K or even 1440. Now, I think this game in 1440 and in 4K plays more than well enough. Right now, I'm sitting 195 to 201 FPS. Well, obviously, I'm not in action at the moment. The clock is boosted up to 2100 megahertz. The um, memory is at 7976. Temperature sitting nice. Um, we're going to see how this plays here. I'm not an Overwatch King by any stretch of the imagination. You can see my uh, frames are at 200, 227. My boost clock has not changed one bit. But I will say it's pretty darn smooth. Probably charging in like that was not the best plan. Died frames floating around 200, which I would say is really nice. was fun. <clears throat> now, again, why did I pick uh, Overwatch to play on a 1080p monitor? Because this is indicative of what someone might play that's going to be a competitive game or that, you know, maybe they're playing League or whatever. Um, I like this game. Uh, I think it's a fun game. Plus, it's, you know, it's free. So, anyway, um, we're going to do a 4K game here uh, just to show how this, handle, this game handles 4K game on, like, a, a higher-end title. And, uh, yeah. We're going to move upstairs to my uh, other monitor because I'm not going to unhook it and bring it down here.
Okay, so this is the ASUS PG27UQ4K Ultra High Def Monitor. Pretty straightforward. So as far as 4K gaming goes, this is about the creme de la creme. Now right off the bat, and I know it's really hard to see because of, uh, of the um, resolution of this and how it shrinks everything in 4K. Right now the uh, boost clock is, clock is sitting at 1980. Um, you know what I should do? First things first, let's go back and let's check the um, precision. And let's, let's actually turn on a, a, an overclock here. So we're gonna load this. This is a real mild overclock that is very stable. It's got a nice fan curve to it. We're gonna come back. Uh, actually, we're gonna make the fan curve a little more aggressive. Let's make that fan curve like crazy aggressive. This is how easy it is to adjust things in Precision X1. So now we're going to hit play, uh, apply. I'm going to go back and hit save to one. Um, actually, I like my stuff loading on startup. So anyway. Okay. So now we've got a little bit of a boost clock. So let's go back into the game. So it was boosting in 1980 on stock. So now... It's boosting to 2070. Well, they, like I said, a real small um, overclock. I'm not looking to break records at the moment or anything. I just wanted to see what it could do right off the bat. Memory clock's at 7976. Temperature sitting at 62, just sitting here at idle. Frame weight's at, uh, at 93 frames per second. Again, that is in 4K, okay? We're using uh, full screen mode, uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, in fact, I'm going to Put this up to the 120 because that's what my monitor is set at right now. I prefer to go to the route of the best possible UHD setting uh, on this monitor. If you go to the overclock of the 144 hertz, which this is not competitive gaming, so I don't need the faster refresh rate, you lose some of your color. So. I'm gonna go ahead and leave it at that. I don't have an FPS limit right now. I'll get the HDR on. Uh, let's see what's in here at HDR settings. I'll turn it up a little bit, why not? Okay. Go into our graphics. Everything set at ultra high. Um, we're gonna put the dynamic revolution, uh, resolution at 60 frames a second, why not? Adaptive anti-aliasing shadows at ultra high. So we're just going nuts on everything here, right? So I'm gonna hit apply. Game, but we don't care about this stuff. I'm not looking to really show you how amazing I'm at this. So right now in the menu, I'm setting 111 uh, frames a second. Again, no big deal. Um, let's just wander around here a little bit. It's been so long since I've been in this game, I can't remember exactly how to play all of it, but it doesn't matter. The idea is to show you a, a, a AAA title in 4K with everything set at ultra, uh, the top end for resolution uh, and see what it looks like. I mean, from my standpoint, this screen looks absolutely stunning. Um, it's probably hard for you to see just because you don't see the same uh, HDR that I do here, but. And right now, you can, uh, I probably can't see the frames per second, but we're setting up at 58 frames a second with everything maxed out. Let's mount up here. I don't even remember where I am in this thing. Menu, okay, my map. Whew, that's bright. So it looks like I need to go over here, okay. This horse is pretty handy, huh? I'm definitely not going to win any horse riding um, contests.
There is no way that he survived from that. I guess I'm supposed to protect the innocent. I forgot. I haven't played this game in so long. Still, you can see what it looks like in here. I mean, this is buttery smooth at 60 frames a second plus in ultra 4K, everything maxed out. I mean, it is unbelievable. All right. So actually here, let's exit out of this one. And then let us boot up. Well, let's boot up Overwatch again. Why not? All right, here we are in the options menu of uh, Overwatch and everything's set at Ultra, as you can see. Ooh, let's go to Epic. Why not? Let's see what that's like. Apply. Ooh. Twenty one hundred is my uh, core clock. Seventy nine seventy six is my memory at the moment and my frame rate 4k epic is 136 I have no bad guys anywhere yet oh. I got shot from somewhere oh there we go okay as you can see I'm at um, again 4k uh, epic settings and my frame rates are more than acceptable to 130 frames a second, 128. I'm getting, uh, my core clock is between 2085 and 2100 megahertz. Memory is 7976 at the moment. Uh, I just walked out and got my butt kicked. Oh, and there we go. And now we go outside of a skirmish into an actual match. So we'll go ahead, we'll play through this real quick. We'll have our opinion. Um, and then we shall come back and uh, uh, show you the benchmarks and finish up.
watch plays an epic setting on a 4K UHD monitor. 130 frames a second most of the match. Um, the clock, again with a very mild overclock, was at 2070. Uh, it, super, super smooth, uh, fantastic picture. Uh, it's a great way to play a game. Let's recap. You've seen the benchmarks. It's a great card. Performance is between the 2080, as it should be, and the 2080 Ti. It's not quite at the level of the 2080 Ti. This card, MSRP, is for $799. The one directly from NVIDIA, uh, MSRP is at $699. Which one should you get? Kind of depends. If you're gonna just stick it in the system on air, I personally would say buy the Founders Edition. Yes, this has got some profile that is benefit to a custom PCB, but with how it's set up now, you get this similar fans, yes, it's only two fans, but it's going to give you the same performance this is basically. If you're going to water cool it, I would, I mean, I, that's what I like to do. I like water cooling, I like the look of it. Uh, does it add much more performance? No. But I like the look of the low temperatures. I love the look of the, the block itself, the water. I mean, I, that's my preference. Personal thing, right? I would say to get this card with the hydro copper block already installed, that's $889 directly from EVGA. Maybe you can find it cheaper. Uh, I haven't done much looking around. But that's my opinion because if you buy this block, and you spend the $200 that they want for their hydro copper blocks, which I think is, I think water blocks are getting too expensive now, again, my opinion. Um, that puts you at 999 bucks. So the already installed at 889, that's a good value. Especially if you consider the fact that the uh, Founders Edition 2080 Super, if you put a block on that from say EK, that's already a mid 150, you know, mid 100s card, upper 100s card or block, I'm sorry, not card, but block, you're already approaching or eclipsing the um, price of this already installed and then you've got the custom PCB. So if you're water cooling it, that's what I would do. If you're leaving on air, personally, I'd just get the Founders Edition and be done with it. I mean, for that kind of a price, you're getting a lot of value, especially when you consider it as the next step up as a 2080 Ti starting around $1,200 and going north from there. I personally don't see the value in that any longer, especially when this can handle about everything. You want high refresh rate gaming for competitive nature? You got it. Go buy yourself a, a, a high refresh rate 240 uh, hertz screen. Uh, that, that's, you know, there you, you've got that. 
I think that the person buying this card and having a 9900K or a 3900X from Ryzen or 3700X, whatever the case is, 9700K, I think they're going to be gaming personally on a 1040, I'm sorry, a 1440 monitor or a 4K monitor. I personally game on a 4K monitor. This handles it no problem. AAA titles, as you see, um, easier, lower end titles. I don't want to call Overwatch or PUBG or one of those low end, but it handles it. Doesn't matter what it is. This card will take care of it. Again, I think if you're spending that kind of money, uh, hopefully you've already got that 1440p or that 4K monitor. If you're gaming on a low refresh rate 10, uh, 1080 monitor, don't buy this card. Upgrade your monitor and then buy a better card. That's my opinion. Um, price points, you've got, I mean, as you can see, NVIDIA is showing you some decent value now for the price points. I still would like to see AMD come with a little more competition for the mid, especially the upper end uh, card to get these prices down, especially on stuff like the 1080 Ti, who know, who know, or the 2080 Ti. Maybe they will, who knows? I guess I'm not expecting that at this point. It doesn't seem to be the market they're driving for. Um, but anyway, I uh, I have to say, yeah, I'd recommend this card if you're using it for a higher end system or if you just want to have one of the best 2080 uh, supers out there. God, I hate that naming scheme. Anyway, hopefully you liked today's video. If you did, hit that thumbs up button. If you didn't, you know what else to do? Hit the thumbs down. Hopefully it's not that. Uh, hit that subscribe button for me, and we will see you in the upcoming weeks here with some additional content.